United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on our agenda is um, in items of interest, recognition, and inquiry. Board of Education members, anything? This I'd just like to do a shout out congratulations to all our 2017 senior graduates. Wish them the best in their futures and a safe graduation evening. Awesome. Anybody else? Administration. As President Beaver, I have two. Uh, on behalf of the district, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Tricia Grave. Uh, she's a parent, uh, she's a gearing parent, uh, but she spent countless hours weeding and gardening and planting at Eddy Elementary. Um, Mr. Carlson has said that her selfless work has been, has been a great, she has provided a great role model for the students in the entire Eddy community. So we want to thank Ms. Grave. At all. And I'd also like to once again congratulate the 235 6th through 12th graders who were recognized at the Board of Education Academic Honors Program. Uh, anyone who was unable uh, to attend, um, I believe you can watch it on the Channel 6 WCTV or WatchCTV.org website, and I would encourage you to do so. Um, the young men and women who were honored are great examples of, uh, of everything that um, we hold dear and look forward to in the future. Thank you. We will start uh, next, our St. Clair County Association of School Boards scholarship recipients and mentors. One from Marine City High School, one from St. Clair High School. We will start with Ashley Beattie, student of Marine City High School, and her mentor, <coughs> Stephen Fox. Please come forward. On behalf of the St. Clair County Association of School Boards, I am pleased to present Ashley Beatty with a check for $600. This is the 27th year that the County School Board Association has awarded scholarship checks to students who are planning to pursue a teaching degree. Ashley will be attending Western Michigan University where she will pursue a major in music and a minor in geology. Ashley is the daughter of Mark and Paula Beatty. Ashley wants to become a music teacher because she wants to inspire students. She would like to show kids that regardless of your home life or your school or your scholar abilities, that everyone can channel their emotions, good or bad, into music. She truly believes that anyone can be a good musician with the ability to become a great musician. She wants it to be her job to inspire them. Steve Fox is the inspiration behind Ashley's desire to teach music. <laughs> <laughs> she always had a strong need for the to be around music, but it was Mr. Fox who mentioned what it was like to see the sparkle in a student's eyes when they find that something that changes their lives. From that moment, Ashley knew the only thing she wanted was to see the sparkle in children's eyes. Congratulations, Ashley. Our St. Clair High School recipient, Madison Rich, and Jeannie Bickley. Please come forward. Welcome. She's not here tonight. Okay. <laughs> On behalf of the St. Clair County Association of School Boards, I am pleased to present Madison Rich with his check for $600. Madison plans to attend Macomb County Community College, where she will study early childhood education. Madison is the daughter of Stephen Pilot and Bud Rich. Madison enjoys working with children and watching them grow and learn. She enjoys being a role model for them and watching the influence she can have on their lives. She loves seeing children reach their full potential, and most importantly, working with kids is fun. 
The teacher who influenced Madison to enter into the education field is Jeannie Bickley. Jeannie is a teacher at our Kids Connection program, and she was taught, and she has taught Madison many different aspects of child care and the important role she can play in children's lives. Congratulations. Next item on our agenda, Jackie Hanton. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jackie Hanton, the Vice President at the Community Foundation, and I just wanted to bring a few updates from the Community Foundation in general um, and let you guys know what we're doing and also bring the East China Schools um, Education Fund up to date on what we're doing, what the fund has available, and what many of you as donors to the fund um, can expect from the fund in coming years. So we'll start with just a few quick facts. Um, so when you take a look at the Community Foundation in general, we had about $2.1 million in grants last year in 2016. And if you go back all the way to our beginning years in 1944, we've awarded over $30 million back into the community since that time. Um, and we've already actually, I need to update that figure uh, because our grants committee just met, have awarded over $700,000 just this year um, in 2017, but we're expecting to be around that $2 million mark again this year. Um, so what does the Community Foundation do? We have over 190 different funds. We do a lot of different things. Um, we had about $6.3 million in donor gifts last year, and we're just simply connecting people um, who care with causes that matter. So truly, um, whether it's education, or um, community and economic development, all of those different areas, we're able to take a donor's passion and help, um, help them put their assets to use um, for good things in the community. And our investment returns for those um, that are worried about that or concerned about that, like to know the numbers, um, you can see there we had about a 10.39% return last year, um, and then our three year and five year, we continue to be in about the top 5% uh, of over 296 foundations and endowments um, when you compare our investment performance with other like size foundations. So we're um, definitely give kudos to our investment uh, committee and finance people uh, that help steer the foundation in the right direction. With our asset growth, um, so you can see a snapshot. We've more than doubled since 2009. Even if you go back to 2014, we were at about 47 million, whereas year to date, um, we're 60 million plus. So we definitely appreciate um, the trust that the community has put into the community foundation. So what are we doing? Of course, it would take me probably a good hour just to describe all the different programs and things that we're doing at the community foundation. One great thing um, that's coming up this week for any of the ladies in the room or men if you care to join us um, is the 100 plus women who care and that'll be on Wednesday. And what we do is we take a $100 check from every attendee and that evening we give out um, $10,000 to three lucky charities um, whose nominations are randomly drawn um, that evening. So that's a, a fun night to take part and kind of get that feeling for charitable giving and enjoy. We have our come home grads. So for those of you seniors that are in the room, once you go off and uh, get your degrees and then you're thinking about what to do with the rest of your life and you wanna come back home, um, our reverse scholarship program, as you might also know it, uh, pays recent college graduates debt in order to move home. So in order to take $10,000 of your debt away, um, it's kind of an incentive to bring you back home and, and give you that, that extra reason um, to come back and live, work, and play here in St. Clair County. Uh, we gave away about $30,000, or what's the equivalent of three of those scholarships last year, and then we hope to expand that program to $100,000 annually to bring 10 students home. Um, more likely than not, we'll be about 60,000 or six graduates this year. And Friday Food for Kids. Um, some of you might be familiar with this program, so it's offered in five different area elementary schools through the Community Foundation, um, partnerships, over 200,000 pounds in food has been given away, but essentially on Fridays, what we do is, um, well, I shouldn't say we, because the schools and great volunteers put together um, backpacks for these children with food in order to have food all weekend long. And so each Friday evening during the school year, they go home with enough food for the weekend. And because of the bulk buying that we're able to do, um, it only costs $100 per child in order to supply them with weekend food all, year, all school year long. And so the, the East China Education Fund, 
So this started back in 2004 and literally started with a zero balance. It was the vision of the board, the vision of students, the vision of teachers that came together and by the end of that first year, the fund was over $33,000 and the current balance is just shy of 215,000. And so if you look back over the course um, of these past 13 years or so, um, over $53,000 has been granted back into the school district um, from this fund. So it's definitely certainly something to be proud of. Um, as you can see at the bottom of the screen there, the earnings are available for enrichment programs in the district. Um, so that can be things such as after school activities, special um, science and math events, fine arts programs, et cetera. Um, but that's yeah, anything that you can call enrichment. Um, is what these funds are available for. So what can you do? How can you engage with this fund? How can you help it grow and support it? Um, obviously, being here this evening, you're all engaged individuals within the community. And annual support, so considering uh, making that annual gift to the fund is always certainly appreciated. And plan giving, so maybe you're not able to make those annual support gifts right now, but you want to support education in years to come and you want to plan for that um, in your will, your trust, your estate, whatever your plan is. And so what we always like to do is kind of put that imaginative figure out there. You're at you know, 215,000 right now. What if you got to $250,000? What kind of annual support could your district draw from that fund as it grows? And the legacy society, so kind of building on that, that plan giving, thinking in the future, putting the, um, the East China Fund in your will or estate What's the Legacy Society? Um, these are the people that are near and dear um, to our heart at the Community Foundation because they've truly taken that step to remember um, the school district and their fund and their will. It's simple to join, it's just a letter of intent. It's not anything that is irrevocable, so you can certainly change your mind over the years. Um, but consider, you know, what if you just left 5% of your estate to charity? Um, I'm sure, you know, I tell, my siblings, if mom and dad leave it all to charity, that's A-OK -okay with me. They may argue with me on that. Um, but 5% is something that certainly um, I think anyone would be proud of to do through their estate. And so that's it. I wanted to be very brief and quick and allow the board if you have any questions. Any questions? Thanks for coming. Thank, thank you yeah. very much You're for welcome. coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is special recognition, Winter Ath Athletic Awards. Mr. Ming and Mr. Rutledge. All right, thank you, President Buer, Dr. Skalka, members of the board. I have the privilege and opportunity this evening to recognize the standout athletes from the winter sports season. I see a lot of faces in here, but I will throw out there the thing we always throw out there with this. A lot of these athletes who are shining during the winter are also spring athletes, so if they don't appear tonight, that's probably where they are. Uh, first little team recognition, our 2017 MAC Blue Champions were our varsity girls bowling team. That's their third year of existence and we've sent kids to the state finals each year. Our girls varsity basketball team were the MAC Gold League Champions and the District Champions. Moving on to individual recognition from the boys varsity bowling team, Jonathan Dean was all conference, MAC all academic, all state academic for the MHSIBCA. John, are you here? John, come up to the front of the room, please. Sorry, you're the first one. Friends, up. Come on up and stand up here at the front. Looking great tonight, John. I like that. Yep, John. Thank you, sir. Stay. Stay. <laughs> okay. Also from the boys bowling team, Joe Creasel, Mac All Academic and All State Academic as well. <laughs> Girls Varsity Bowling, Natalie Haas, All Conference, Mac All Academic. And Alyssa Crampton, she was all conference, all region, all state first team, MAC all academic, the MAC blue MVP, the MAC singles tournament champion, the regional champion, and she was named to the Detroit Free Press Dream Team, as well as finishing third place in the state. And on Friday, she'll be signing a letter of commitment to bowl at Olivet. Awesome. From our varsity competitive cheer team, 
Shelby Chedoreski, All Conference, Mac All Academic. And boys varsity swim and dive team, Luke Ames, who set a school record in the 200 medley freestyle, as well as being Mac All Academic. Luke Pettinger, MISCA qualifier, state qualifier, setting school records for the 100 butterfly, the 200 medley relay team, and he's also Mac All Academic. His twin, Zach Pettinger, school record, 200 medley relay team. <laughs> Justin Wiseman, MISCA qualifier, school records in the 100 breaststroke, as well as the 200 medley relay team. <laughs> and the boys varsity basketball team, William Pat Salas, all conference, and Mac all academic. <laughs> and the girls varsity basketball team, Stephanie Abraham, MAC All Conference, All MAC Gold First Team, and the MAC All Academic Team. <laughs> Antonia Potfin, All Conference, All MAC Gold First Team. <laughs> Paige Tranquita, All Conference, All MAC Gold First Team, MAC All Academic. Can't forget about Carissa Austin, All-Conference MAC Gold First Team, MAC All-Academic, MAC Gold MVP. She was All-State Honorable Mention, as well as being named First Team BCAM's Best All-State Team. And she improved her record set last year and is now in the school record books, as well as the MHSA record book, um, for 10th of all time in the state of Michigan with 213 career three-pointers. Wow. Bing. Congratulations to all of our Mariner recipients tonight. I'm going to be recognizing the St. Clair winter sports uh, athletes. First of all, team recognitions, varsity competitive cheer team was recognized as academic all state. So congratulations to them and coach Casey Rebecca. Varsity boys swim and dive team, the 2017 dual meet and Mac blue champions. 8-1 overall record, 13th in the state, breaking six school records, coached by Marcus Kronz. Congratulations. <laughs> Some individual, in, excuse me, individual recipients. Ben Davidson, All-Conference, All-State, MAC MVP for both basketball. <laughs> and Devin Dombro, All-Conference. Varsity Girls Basketball, Jessica Bohm is All-Conference. <laughs> Varsity Girls Competitive Cheer, Allison Chunk, All-Conference, All-District, and Academic All-State. <laughs> We're going to be dealing with some of the same issues with students being involved in spring activities. So. Lake and Kuhlman, all conference, all district, and just to make sure that she knew that there, that we knew that she was still here, she's qualified for two events at the MHSA tr state track finals. Mm. <laughs> Kylie Percha, all conference and all district. <laughs> Chloe Schweighofer, all conference and all district. Hannah Hayes is all conference. <laughs> and uh, Coach Casey Verbecki was recognized as Coach of the Year. <laughs> Cr 
from the Varsity Boys Swim and Dive Team, Evan Wanner, All-Conference, All-State, MAC MVP, holder of six individual or team records, a state finalist qualifier, and will soon be recognized as the Blue Water Swimmer of the Year. Tristan Fraley, All-Conference, two, er, two school record holder, state finals qualifier. Cannon Brooks, All-Conference, holder of two records, state finals qualifier. <laughs> William Oldford, All-Conference, all holder of two records and also a state qualifier. <laughs> Ryan Johnson, All-Conference, state finals qualifier. Matthew Aragoni, All-Conference, State Finals Qualifier. <laughs> Caden Proctor, All-Conference and State Finals Qualifier. <laughs> Derek LaDuke, All-Conference. And Walter Roja, he's our foreign exchange student from Bolivia. He really just is, he's just Walter. He's like Elvis or Prince. <laughs> he's a legend. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Kohler, all conference. And Jared Faulkner, all conference. Again, I'd like to recognize their coach, Marcus Krantz, who is this year's Coach of the Year. <laughs> Scrunch in a little bit so we can get a good photo. Everybody stand up behind these guys. <laughs> Next item on our agenda is our consent agenda. Motion is needed for approval of minutes. Special Board of Education meeting April 11, 2017. Special Board of Education meeting April 13, 2017. Special Board of Education meeting April 20, 2017. Regular Board of Education meeting April 24, 2017. Special Board of Education meeting April 29, 2017. Approval of payment of bills, financial statements, schedule of investments. So moved. Moved by Ms. Mr. Mullane. Support. Support by Mr. Listeria. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So carried. Next item is recognition of persons wishing to address the board. I have two cards here. Um, Nancy Mott, grade A teachers.
Good evening, Mr. Beaver, Dr. Skalka, members of the board. I'm here again, Nancy Mott, proud teacher at St. Clair Middle School and ECEA member to talk to you about great things that are happening in our school. <laughs> okay. This is a submission from Michelle Barker, and she wrote that my sixth graders read the poem in Flanders Field during their poetry unit of study and created the next stanza using the poet's rhythm and rhyme scheme. They created red poppies out of construction paper and wrote their final draft and created a bulletin board to showcase the work. The World War I poem is the basis for the Memorial Day red poppy symbol distributed by the American Legion and the VFW to remember those who gave the last full measure, excuse me, of devotion. Her American history class is studying the Civil War. She received grant money to purchase Civil War hats which are worn in class. The students are all part of contingents in both the Confederate and the Union armies. Band students play their trumpets and snare drums at the beginning and the end of each hour they play taps. They learned how to march on Friday with the help of the band and that was so much fun. It is amazing, she says, and the hats will be worn during our reenactment of Pickett's Charge, which was the final battle at Gettysburg in the next few weeks. So please stay tuned to the St. Clair Middle School website for videos and photos. Gary Griffin says at Pine River, fifth grade is connecting their Earth, Moon, and Sun unit with a trip to Cranbrook's Planetarium to view the Earth's revolution in our solar system and the phases of the moon. Cindy Monticello, a special education teacher at St. Clair High School, says for the past four years, the cognitively impaired students at St. Clair High have been helping the environment by recycling plastic bottles. Science Alive, which is a traveling show, came last week to all sixth grade science classes at Marine City Middle School, and the students got to see the following animals, a chinchilla, a sloth, an alligator, an armadillo, in a Burmese python. They all got to touch all of the animals if they wanted, and they even got a special hug from the python if they desired. <laughs> Ryan Felax, who is a teacher at Marine City Middle School and the JV baseball coach at Marine City High School, said that last Thursday, his JV baseball team gave up a few hours of their own time to be baseball buddies for the Special Needs Baseball League in Marysville. This is the second year that they were doing it, and the boys did an amazing job and had a ton of fun. Cindy Wisman at St. Clair High School is an art teacher, and one of her students, I believe it was Jessica Rhine, won the poster contest for the St. Clair County Community of Mental Health. This poster will be used as an advertisement all over St. Clair County and on billboards. So congratulations to Cindy and to Jessica. She's also received a grant for $1,000 to help with the jumpstart the funds needed for an outside sculpture at St. Clair High School. The sculpture will landmark the Legacy Project. Lori Gardner, a Marine City business education teacher, currently has 32 students signed up for the Disney Youth Education Trip for March of 2018. This is the third year that she's running this trip and it has been a huge success. Carrie Estapa is currently studying hydrogeology at St. Clair Middle School. Students are looking at how human land usages and decisions impact the quality of our groundwater and surface water. Um, the project started with, with Mr. Kafkas and eighth grade students when the St. Clair Middle School was first built. Students will determine after several water tests um, possible sources uh, if what happens if the, water, the levels in the water are too high. They will also learn about the importance and effects of using a wetland for water runoff rather than, stor than a storm drain. Rebecca Dunn, a fifth grade teacher at Bell River, said that all fifth graders participated in the Blue Water Sturgeon Festival Art and Writing Contest. Because of this, they have been rewarded a free field trip to take a cruise on the Huron Lady 2 on June 2nd. There they will get to learn and about and see live sturgeon and sea lampreys. Riverview East students, under the direction of Jason Steyer and the other teachers there, have been collaborating with community leaders in creating a youth-driven teen center in Marine City. Students have been successful in establishing an official 5013C nonprofit and are close to acquiring a building. In addition, they are working with Design for a Difference in bringing their vision to life. The River Rec Teen Zone is slated to open late this summer 
and will offer programs for teens in the arts, technology, and community leadership. Please check out all the cool information they have at www.riverreckteenzone.org. Uh, Counselor Lisa Higgins at St. Clair High School and the rest of the St. Clair High School teachers are proud to say that their senior class have been awarded over $2.5 million in scholarship money this year. Scott Isley, who is in charge of the St. Clair Middle School robotics team, is celebrating his 15th year anniversary running that program. And Amy McNabb, a math teacher at Marine City Middle School, says that her eighth grade pre-algebra class has finished everything that they needed to all year, so they are creating their own notes and assessments to teach the classes as a review. Marine City Middle School eighth grade algebra will also be working on geometry concepts to prepare them for next year. Um, this is the type of this is the time of year that uh, teachers are earning their paychecks with the ending of the school year and all of the things that have to be done. Um, but also, I want to say that we did have one teacher give a nice shout out to another teacher, and that was. Um, Bert Van Dyke said he would like to let you know that Marnie Williams who is, I believe, the new art teacher at Marine City High School, has breathed new life into the visual, visual arts program at Marine City. It is such a change, and we have amazing student art represented all throughout the building, and she is very involved with the students and their work. So I just wanted to let you know of the great things that are happening in, in our classrooms. Thank Thanks, you. Nancy. Thank you. Our second card, Karen Cedar. Good evening. I'm Karen Cedar, ECA president. I'm here tonight on behalf of all the teachers at East China School District to recognize and thank Steve Skalka for four years of service to our district. <clears throat> Steve has worked tirelessly for our district in a climate that was not always so positive. He has had to present tough options to the board to keep the fund balance afloat, and he had to do so while negotiating with nefarious creatures such as myself. <laughs> <laughs> Although we have not always seen eye to eye, Steve always had a rationale for any proposal he made. On the other hand, my team and I were quick to explain to him why he was wrong. <laughs> Since our bargaining team ended up being all females, I am sure he felt like the old axiom, if a man says something and his wife is not there to hear him, is he still wrong? <laughs> Except for there are six of us. Steve, I invite you to have your new union president give me a call. I will gladly explain to her your poker face, sure. your tells, <laughs> and what the look of complete and utter despair all indicate. Seriously, it has been a pleasure to work with you. I wish you the best at your new school. Please accept this token of appreciation from the East China Education Association. Thank you very much. I didn't fill out a green card, but I received a letter from a young St. Clair High School student that I think needs to be read because it's honoring his teachers, his school, his administrators. Dear Mr. Bewer, hello, my name is Ryan Armstrong and I'm doing a project for my English class. The project is a community project and I thought it would better way to help, want a better way to help my community than better the institution I attend every day so that that is my, what I am working on today. But before I say my piece, allow me to tell you a bit about myself. For starters, I lived in the, down the road from the, Saint, from the high school my entire life, St. Clair High School. I'm in 12th grade and I play in not only the marching band, but the jazz band as well. And that is partly why I'm writing you also. You see, I figure if I do a project like this, I should make it about something I love. I am just so grateful I go to a school with a good, with as good a music program as St. Clair High School. The teacher is unrivaled, my favorite teacher in the whole building. I believe the class is so good as well as important that I'd like to see it continue until I am old enough to have a kid of my own in it. As I'm sure you haven't had any ideas about shutting it down, I am writing to strengthen your opinion on it. Do you play any instruments? <laughs> Answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I play saxophone and in a in jazz band, and I play rhythm guitar. Well, anyway, I won't waste any more of your time. I was hoping if you heard about my good opinion about the book, about band, perhaps I could influence or even change yours. With regards, Ryan Armstrong. That came through Kelly Vargo, and I did answer him. And um, nice young man, so I thought it had to share that. Next item on our agenda are reports. We'll start off with the superintendent report. Yes, uh, thank you, President Bewer. Um, there's a call for, call for special meeting is the first item, and um, normally at the May regular meeting we present the final revision of the current fiscal year budget and the, a proposal for the following fiscal year budget. Um, for folks following along, um, right now the school aid fund is not uh, has not been decided as the whole state budget has not been decided. Um, also, with the most recent uh, voluntary severance plan, we had some adjustments to make in that budget. And so I just wanted to, you've all agreed to come to a special meeting on Monday, June 12th at 6 p.m., but I wanted the community, because that is an open meeting and because normally we would do our budget meeting here at a time in which um, people are used to seeing a fourth, uh, fourth Monday meeting. If anyone is interested in seeing those budget presentations, it will occur on June 12th at 6 p.m. Okay. Um, summer feeding. Um, we're very happy to announce that I believe for the fourth consecutive summer, uh, we will participate in Meet Up and Eat Up and we wanted to again get this out on channel six it'll be on the district website i've asked all the schools to put it in whatever summer communications they're sending home before the end of the year um, but um, it'll be uh, we will serve lunch monday through friday as you see other than uh, july 4th week uh, at marine city middle school this is open to all students you do not have to have an there's not an income limit there's no, no tests of eligibility. It's not just free and reduced. Any student um, can come and get lunch over the summer. In fact, if you are visiting from outside the district, uh, your cousin comes in from wherever, bring them to lunch. It's a, it's a free opportunity. And so we've, we're really, really pleased to do this once again. And we will also participate with uh, St. Clair Rec and uh, have a second feeding site out at East China Park. Uh, third on our agenda for reports, uh, student handbooks. Um, changes, uh, you had those. Changes were indicated in yellow and or margin notes. Um, if you had the opportunity to look them over and have questions tonight, we can address them. But they are a discussion item tonight for action next month. And so um, if you have not had an opportunity or you want to look them over further, um, you can send me and or building principals uh, any question about that before we vote next month. Uh, Trustee Bebuck. <laughs> Did I have that look on my face? Oh, I got tipped to do it too. <laughs> <laughs> on page 15 with the high school graduation requirements, Okay. Uh, down towards the bottom where mm -hmm. world language was changed from one credit to two credits. Mm -hmm. So that should be an increase of one. Mm -hmm. But then the required class credits jumped from 16 to 18. Um, go ahead, Mr. Ming. That was to correct a math error that we had last year. So it should have been 17 last year? Yes, we are correcting an error that was in our print last year from a handbook. OK, so all right. Then the other one, mm -hmm. and this is really minor, it's just uh, on page 59, mm -hmm. uh, under defiance of authority, I mean this is really minor, mm -hmm. um, it says minor offense and then it says uh, three detention days and then it says major. Uh -huh. The word major should be down with on the next line with major offense. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much. All right. That's, that's it. And again, should you have any further questions, remember we won't vote till next month, and so you have the opportunity. But I truly appreciate the uh, the close read, so that we can correct some of those things before we go to print. Well, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> say something. Uh, no, I will wait to do that after. <laughs> I right. saw that one too, but I didn't. Okay, never mind. Once a teacher, always a teacher. You're still grading papers. I, I, I yeah, know. I know. <laughs> Thank you. I, I know. <laughs> 
Who, who's the in charge of the elementary curriculum? Because we'll, we'll mention, or the elementary handbook. We'll mention. No, no, no. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll mention it off. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it's just, a, uh, never mind. <laughs> just the spelling. It's a spelling error of a word. I kind of know all you want to know. Neola policy, uh, board policy update um, has been our practice. We receive from Neola quarterly updates depending on how active our legislature and or the federal government is. And so you had with, uh, with your uh, board packet this month a overall synopsis and then all the individual changes. Again, any questions you might have tonight, we'll try to address. Other questions, uh, you still have a whole month as we'll vote to approve those next month. Okay. Next item is our reproductive health report. Catherine Woolman. Good evening, everyone. I am here with Mrs. Nicole Flynn, who is a teacher at St. Clair Middle School. We are the co-chairs of the Reproductive Health Committee here in East China, and we are here to present um, our report. We give, our committee gives a report to the board every two years, and so this is our biannual report. <laughs> so this report and the existence of the committee itself is required by law. Each public school district must have a Reproductive Health Committee. The committee minutes must, and the dates and times must be posted to the public so we do work with the um, district's technology office and superintendent secretary to make sure that those are posted in advance so that people are aware of the meeting, they can attend if they wish, and then we keep all of our minutes on record here at central office so that if anyone ever wanted to come in and see what we were looking at or working on or the approval process, they could come in and do that upon request. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier, your two-year update. The committee is led by Carrie Mackey, who is our district nurse. She serves as the reproductive health supervisor. The state does have requirements that the supervisor must meet. They must either be a nurse or someone who is currently um, in the medical profession. So she serves as that role for us. As I mentioned, we are the advisory co-chairs. The law also requires that half of the voting members be parents who currently have students in the district. So we have a variety of parents who serve on the committee and we are very lucky that most of the parents who serve on our committee are either currently medical professionals or they are health teachers in other districts. So they're very vested in the content that we're looking at. Um, the committee also has a member of the clergy we have student representation, typically at the high school level, because a lot of the materials that we vet tend to be more for high school. We have several current health teachers from both the middle and high school level, as well as our teachers who do the elementary presentations on hygiene and, um, and sexual reproduction, as well as a representative from the health department. Uh, Jennifer Michalik has served on our committee for the last several years as the health department representative. And as always, we welcome any community members who would like to participate. Each year, we have a few parents whose children have graduated and they no longer serve on the committee, and we have new members join. So anyone is welcome to come and participate. Um, we typically meet twice a year. So since you were last given a report, the committee met twice during the 15-16 school year and twice during the 16-17 school year. And as I mentioned earlier, both the agendas and minutes for those meetings are available for public review if anyone should like to see them. One thing that the committee does have to report out on is the professional development that our current health teachers receive. All East China t School District teachers who instruct in the area of reproductive health have been trained as required in reproductive health as well as HIV and AIDS. Um, that training is typically provided either at our RESA or down at the Macomb ISD. They offer that several times annually and our teachers attend as they need to update their certification. They earn certificates at those trainings and they're kept on file in the personnel office. Our teachers do meet annually to review the curriculum and the instructional methods used to deliver instruction. So I will say over the course of the last two years, we have updated the, um, we've updated the presentation that they receive on some of the various drugs that are being taken and used in the county or abused, I should say, um, on several of the STDs. The health department provides us with a current presentation that can be used in our high school classes, and so the committee has vetted that and approved it. Um, we have looked at um, new videos to use in the elementary schools for the fifth grade presentation, and so the committee does look at a lot of different materials to make sure that our students are getting the best possible resources. All parents, 
I'm sorry, I lost my voice this week. All parents with children who are scheduled to receive instruction in reproductive health and HIV and AIDS awareness are notified prior to the instruction. There's a letter that is sent home. And the parents have the opportunity to review all of the materials and the media that are used um, prior to their child receiving instruction. And parents have the opportunity to opt their child out of the instruction with written notification to the building principal. And then on the days that we go in and do the lessons um, that they've opted out and they just go the, to the office and wait and they skip the part. The part. Um, curriculum scope and sequence. All print and video material used in the reproductive health units are approved by the advisory committee. We watch those during um, the meetings or we read through them and discuss it prior to approval. The curriculum as a whole is reviewed every two years, and it was reviewed this year at our second meeting, and it complies with Michigan School Code Section 1507. Assessment of student progress. All students in elementary, middle, and high school reproductive health and HIV AIDS awareness classes are assessed via local tools annually. Students in the middle and high schools participate in the Michigan Profile for Healthy Youth, the MIFI survey, and it's given biannually. They'll participate again in the 2017-18 school year. And all assessments and surveys are aligned to the Michigan Department of Education benchmark objectives. We have to develop goals for ourselves for our next two-year section. So for next year in particular, our goals are to identify multiple students who can participate in the committee. Since we have mostly high school students that participate, we're constantly cycling people in and out. So that's a goal almost every year. To make the community more aware of committee meetings and activities, and to explore updated teacher and student resources for the seventh and ninth grade class health classes. And we just want to thank all of the health teachers for the district and our committee members. Do you guys have any questions for us? Okay, thank questions? you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Item seven is our information discussion items. A, summer projects, St. Clair High School tennis courts, electrical contract. Yes, we again want to uh, thank the, uh, the, the St. Clair uh, donors of the Community Foundation who provided a generous gift to reconstruct the tennis courts at St. Clair High School. Uh, at your March meeting, you approved uh, construction bids for, uh, constru you, provide, you approved bids, excuse me, for construction, fencing, and painting, but electrical bids had not been received yet. We have received electrical bids. I will explain that um, they came in higher than what we uh, expected them to come in, but within the amount of the gift. Um, we, though, went back to the electrical uh, contractor who was the low bidder and asked if he could do his project in two phases. Um, the reason for that was, though it's within, his bid was within the total cost of the project and the gift, we wanted to ensure that we had a contingency in case some other aspect of the project um, developed that um, required change orders or other such uh, increases in the cost of construction and so he was able to do that um, what you have then is uh, tonight um, a action item to approve uh, the low bid in two phases um, again we anticipate no uh, problems with the with the work but in the event that it does, the courts can be uh, finished, and then the lighting would just have to come at a different time. If there are no problems, then everything gets done on schedule. Um, we ask that you approve this tonight so that indeed they can um, order the materials, get the work started, run the conduit and everything while it's still, uh, while the ground is still torn up before they start pouring courts and things like that. So um, that's why that item is before you tonight. Kids Connection relocations. Um, similarly, we've talked about um, uh, moving Kids Connection from the ECEC building um, to Eddy as a more permanent uh, uh, location. Uh, there will uh, it would uh, eliminate any uh, confusion or mid-year scrambling should ECEC sale go through. We've provided you in your board packet several uh, benefits to the relocation. All that work is in progress. 
um, including work with the licensing uh, at the state level. In order for us to um, get moving on that project, you have the HVAC unit ventilator uh, low bid in front of you tonight. There will be additional bids that will come to you in the next, uh, in, your, in your June meeting. But again, in order to complete the project in time to get licensure and be ready for the little ones in September, we ask that uh, you, take, um, you take action tonight on the unit ventilators, which are the heating and cooling uh, apparatus in the rooms. Uh, I will again say that this is a project um, that, or I'll, re or I'll inform the public, that this is a project that we are doing primarily out of fund balance from the latchkey account, not from the general fund. So as we look at different projects that we have been doing throughout the school year, we've always kind of looked for um, alternative funding other than general fund, whether that be um, the sinking fund, whether that be gift and donation, or whether that is, in this particular case, the latchkey fund. All right, another summer project, Mr. Griselka is going to be extremely busy this summer, um, is um, planned, a planned project as part of the sinking fund. We have a five-year sinking fund project plan. I think we're in year two of that, of that five-year plan. Usually when we get to year four, we, we redo the plan for the next five years. This particular uh, fiscal year, we completed the Bell River, uh, uh, the Pine, no, Pine River, the Pine River Lentil Project, um, and we will be looking at replacing controls at both Marine City High, High School and St. Clair High School. These are um, heating and, and cooling controls. Um, they are in many ways, in, in both instances, they are original equipment with that building. DOS-based systems, if you remember the word DOS, um, they, they are no longer supportable. And we will be going to um, IP and internet-based uh, systems that are compatible with other systems currently in the building. And um, that will allow us and uh, Mr. Grizelka and his team to um, control our systems remotely in the event that um, you know, we have an unplanned event or some event that we didn't know about. We can, uh, we can certainly control our systems. So um, that one um, is not to be acted on tonight. That one is just for your information tonight, and we will have bids coming to you. Um, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, those bids are June 15th. That's right. So you'll have that as an action item next month. And we have two uh, RISA items on our information discussion uh, this evening. One is their 1718 budget proposal. Um, board members, you were provided uh, copies of their budgets at your strategic planning meeting at the end of April. We hope that you had time to review that. With us tonight is a newly appointed or newly seated RISA Superintendent Kevin Miller and, the, uh, and their finance director, Ms. Tracy Recor, who are here to answer questions should you have any. Uh, no presentation, but have uh, answer questions should you have any. Um, this is an advisory vote. We know that um, your vote um, doesn't mean that they can't have their budget in the manner in which they presented it. And yet, um, we suggest um, that in, um, in, in the spirit of good cooperation and working with Risa, it is my recommendation that you approve their budget tonight. Okay. Good evening. Do you want to make, say anything at all, Dr. It's Skelker? It's up to the board. Okay. <laughs> okay. Please, I guess. Go right ahead. Okay, I'll just give you a couple of bullet points and then uh, if you'd like to ask any questions, I'd be happy to entertain those. Uh, the three budgets that you have, the general fund, the special ed fund, and the vocational ed fund uh, include no percentage increases for the 17-18 budget year. The only increases would be if somebody assumes a new position that would carry with it a higher salary. So that would be the only increases that we have in the budget. Over the last 13 months, we've cut a, almost a half a million in administrative costs. Uh, when I became superintendent on April 1, uh, we did not 
replace my administrative position, knowing that that was going to happen in 2017. When my administrative assistant retired last June, we did not replace her. Uh, when she retired last June, I've been uh, working with a couple of other administrative assistants in the building uh, since that time. We also eliminated a couple of mid-level uh, administrative positions in our IT department, and the total is a little over 492000 in savings to the, the budget. Uh, fund balances in all three budgets uh, do well in two main budgets include a set aside, just so you know. Uh, we have a little thing called the DTE plants, which I know you all are well aware in East China Township. So we have been set as setting aside funds for the last three to four years, knowing that uh, we were going to have a closure of the coal fired plant. Um, I attended a meeting at the East China offices, actually, uh, township offices about, I think it was the day before spring break, actually, and got more information. We're sure praying and hoping that the uh, DTE elects to build again in either China or East China township. But if they don't, uh, it is a uh, hit to about 500000 a year in our special ed budget and about 200000 in our vocational or CTE budget. Uh, so we've done a set aside for about a three year period in case that we have that time period where the coal fired is closed and the gas fired is then opened. Uh, because that's what we were told originally could be the timetable between the closure of one and the opener of another. We're not the only budget, as you know, impacted by that. St. Clair County Community College, the county budget, and both China and East China Townships are uh, dramatically impacted by that as well. Uh, as you may have uh, been aware, we added back our construction trades program last fall. Uh, that went by the wayside during the Great Recession as there were no uh, construction trade jobs available at the time, but we saw a couple of years ago that that time was ending. Uh, and I guess there is a pun intended, we retooled it uh, and brought it back a little differently. Uh, we reopened it with year one. As you may be aware, we used to build houses on Oregon Street in Marysville for years and years, but when we brought the program back, we actually uh, realized that the kids didn't have a chance to do all of the trades while they were building a house. There were only two toilets generally in a house. So with 48 kids, you tell me how many kids can put a toilet in uh, one house. So actually the, the students, and it's quite a sight to see in the back of our warehouse section of our tech building, have built little mini condos. And each pair of students morning and afternoon, so we have 24 little condos built in the back uh, indoors. So they've done everything from masonry, electrical, plumbing, heating and cooling, siding, roofing, er everything has been done inside those condos. And year two then will be field-based very similar to what we do with our health occupations program where they do a year, get their licensure, and then they go out in the field and do their second year actually at a hospital or a, or a care facility. Uh, so we brought back construction trades, and in this fall we're happy that, uh, to announce that we're bringing in a computer programming or coding, as you may have heard, and that program is already full, and we have a waiting list already for that program in the fall, so we're happy to bring that program uh, back as well. With that, I mean, those are the major highlights of the budget, but I'd be more than happy to entertain any questions that the board might have. Questions? Well, I, not a question, but um, I'm lucky enough to work with you frequently, and um, we have a nice sister together, but for the benefit of the rest of the people in the room and the people at home, could you just briefly talk about your background? My background. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to be back in my old stomping grounds, by the way. Uh, this, I got this feeling of deja vu when I walked in the door tonight, but uh, I uh, grew up in Port Huron, uh, graduated from Port Huron Northern. I won't tell you the year because then you know my age. Uh, <laughs> 1978 is when I graduated from Port Huron Northern. Uh, was, my first career was actually in radio. Uh, I worked in radio for about 14 years and I came back to uh, education. I had an educator family. My father and my dad's twin brother, my sister, my, three of my cousins are all in education right now. So I came back later, actually at age 32, taught 11 years in Marysville, came to East China and was assistant principal with this wonderful lady here at, uh, at uh, Marine City High School. Uh, and then a year later went to St. Clair Middle as principal and then after three years at St. Clair Middle, as you many of you know, I became uh, superintendent of Croswell Lexington Schools. And I'll tell you a quick little story. Mrs. Bebuck told me in my year at Marine City, and you'll remember this, that she said, well, you're going to be a superintendent in four years. And then sure enough, four years later, uh, I was a superintendent. I told her at the time, you're cr absolutely crazy, Pat, but mm -hmm. um, it, it happened four years later. And then. Uh, after eight, eight years at Croslex, uh, the opportunity to come down to Risa and Dan was putting together kind of a, 
uh, a succession plan, if you will, and we had developed a great relationship through the years, uh, a respectful relationship, and Dan brought me on board about two years ago with the knowledge that uh, it wasn't for sure, but the plan was all along if that's what the board wanted to do as far as succession, that I would become superintendent of Arisa when Dan retired. I didn't know really when that date would be. In fact, Dan didn't know until November when he announced it would be at the end of March in 2017. So I assumed the seat in, in, uh, on April 1. That's my, the brief as I can get, Lynn. That's good. So. That was very good. I am so happy you're in that position. Thank you, Pat. I, I think Risa is very lucky to have you. And I'm lucky to have the job. I, I'm very appreciative of the opportunity and, and look forward to working. I just thought it would be a nice gesture in my first uh, uh, couple of months on the, on the, in the seat to come out to all of our local. This, this is meeting number seven this month. You're the <laughs> final one. And I raced here from Algonac with a meeting at 7 o'clock. They had me first on the agenda tonight. So... It's a pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, thank you very much for taking the time to, to come you. share that Thanks. information with us. Appreciate the opportunity for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, second RISA item is their biennial board election. And um, it is a, not a board election similar to um, your board elections. In this particular case, um, candidates um, apply directly to RISA and then each of the individual boards uh, in the county, the seven boards elect uh, uh, someone to represent, and then they go and officially make the election of the candidates. In this particular case, there are two um, open seats. Um, Harold J. Burns, who is an incumbent, is running again, and Jeffrey L. Wine is a new candidate running for the other seat, and you have bios on them. Tonight we'll have a resolution asking you to appoint President Bewer as your, as your delegate to um, go to the meeting for that election process. Okay. Right. Any questions? Move on to our uh, board item eight, action board action item agendas. We'll have quite a few of them, so we'll get started. Recommended action, per administration recommendation, the Board of Education approves the RESA budget resolution as read, indicating that that you have received and support the SCC RESA budget for 2017 and 18. Motion is needed. So moved. So moved. Support. Supported. Here is the resolution. Whereas the board received the St. Clair County RESA budget on or before May 1st, 2017, and whereas in accordance with section 380.624 of the revised school code, this board must now adopt a resolution expressing its support or disapproval for the proposed RESA budget and must submit to the RESA budget board any specific objections and or proposed changes the board may have to the budget prior to June 1, 2017. Therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Education has received and reviewed the proposed intermediate school district budget in accordance with Section 624 of the Revised School Code. As amended, and the adoption of the resolution expresses its support of the proposed intermediate school district budget. The Secretary of the Board is hereby directed to submit a copy of this resolution to the Secretary of the RESA Board of Education, along with any specific objections or proposed changes to the budget no later than June 1, 2017. Comments or questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Item B, recommendation per administration, or the Board of Education approves the RESA biennial board election resolution as read. Motion needed. So, so moved. moved. In support. support. Resolution of the East China School District Board of Board. District Board of Education, whereas the biennial election of the board and St. Clair County Regional Educational Services Agency Intermediate School District will be held on Monday, June 5th, at a meeting as of representatives from the consistent constituent school districts, whereas Section 614.2 of the revised school code requires a constituent school board to designate its representative and identify the intermediate school district candidate the board supports for each position to be filled on the board by the resolution adopted no later than 21 days prior to the date of the election. And whereas section 614.2 prescribes the method for passage of a resolution including the requirement 
of consideration of the resolution were not less than one public meeting before adopting the resolution. And whereas the board previously considered the resolution at an open meeting con conducted in a manner prescribed under the Medi Open Meetings Act, May 22, 2017. Now there be it resolved, the board designates James Bewer as its representative to serve in the, on the 2017 election body responsible for electing members to the St. Clair County Regional Educational Service Agency, Intermediate School District, Board of Education, and Todd Distelrath as alternate representative in the event the designated representative is unavailable to attend. The, the board supports candidate Harold Burns and Jeffrey Wine for a position on the St. Clair County Regional Educational Service Agency, Intermediate School District, Board of Education for a term of six years. The board directs its representative, James Bewer, to vote for the candidate, Harold Burns and Jeffrey Wine, at at least on the first ballot taken at the June 5th, 2017 election. The board authorizes and directs its secretary to file this resolution with the secretary of the St. Clair Regional Education Agency, Intermediate School District, Board of Education. Comments or questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So carried. Item C, recommendation action per administration recommendation, the Board of Education approves the contract renewal with Chartwell's Food Service for the 2017-18 school year. Motion is needed. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Bubak. Support. Support. Mrs. Bickford. <coughs> comments or questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So carried. Item D, recommendation action. The poor administration recommendation, the Board of Education approves the bid by MHM Construction in the amount of $53,685 for phase one and $59,826 for phase two for the electrical work as part of the tennis court project at St. Clair High School, phase two to be completed only if the initial gift or subsequent gifts provide the necessary funding. Motion is needed. So moved. Moved by Mr. Distelrath. Support. Support by Mrs. Bebot. Comments or questions? I have a quick question, Mr. Yes. President. Um, it says in our packet that the bids came in higher than expected. Just curious what we expected. We had an initial thought that it could run between seventy-five and eighty-five thousand dollars. Was there any explanation why they were so much higher than what we? People expected? are doing projects again. Okay. There so are, just just there demand. Are, okay. It really is demand. I mean, there are tennis court projects and just construction in general. Yeah. Port Huron's working this summer. Other districts and those kind of things. Well, I guess we can't complain about that. Though. No. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So carried. Recommended action. Per administration recommendation, the Board of Education approves the bid by PCT Security in the amount of 25734 to provide more secure entrances at each school's main entrance and unit pricing of $2,573.42 for each identified additional entrance. Motion needed. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Bebot. Support. Support by Mr. Mullane. Comments or questions? Uh, with approval of this, when would these be added? Um, the work, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Brzezelka, we plan to have those in place for the start of next school year. Right. Yes. Okay. The, uh, and we genuinely appreciate in the, um, in the action item um, the unit pricing figure, that is to allow additional doors such as each St. Clair High School, Marine City High School, because you have an athletic entrance or the big parking lots where kids come in at the at different times during the day. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So carried. Recommended action per administration recommendation. The Board of Education approves the bid for Bull House LLC Airdell in the amount of $27,600 for unit ventilators as part of the project to relocate Kids Connection to Eddie Elementary. Motion needed. So moved. Moved by Mr. Distelrath. Support. Support by Mrs. Griefor. Comments or questions? 
Just one more quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, so this means we're going ahead with moving Kids Connection regardless of the fate of the other building? We are uh, for many of the reasons cited in, in, in the justification that was in the board book, but primarily um, we truly anticipate um, being able to sell ECEC at some point into the future and don't want to be caught midstream sure. having to, uh, especially with the licensing issues, those don't come easily. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So carried. Last action item, recommended, recommended action. For administration recommendation, the Board of Education award a one-year substitute teacher placement services contract to PCMI effective July 1st, 2017. The contract can be terminated by either party upon 90 days written notice. Motion needed. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Griefor. Support. Support by Mr. Disterath. Comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Moving to item nine, closed session for the purpose of discussing negotiations. Recommended action that the Board of Education goes into closed session pursuant to action section 8C of the Open Meetings Act 267 of 1976. That being for the board discussion connected with the negotiations of collective bargaining. Support. Who moved? I'm sorry, who moved? Mr. M Ms. Trustee Mullane. Okay. I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. Roll call vote, Mr. Mullane? Yes. Mrs. Bebuck? Yes. Mrs. Frank? Yes. I vote yes. Mrs. Griefor? Yes. Yes. Mr. Zisra? Motion carried. We will come back out of open session and take action on item 10, which is the two-year contract agreement. Items for a special board meeting on item 11, district financial reports, 2016-17 budget revisions, 2017-18 budget revisions, supplemental budget information, Certification of taxes, kids connection, relocation, construction bids, superintendent contract. Final items for next regular board meeting, <coughs> ECSD retirees, approval of ECSD 2015-16 budget final revision, and approval of ECSD 2016 budget approval, original budget. At that point, we will adjourn. Thank you so very much. <coughs>